On show 452, Tesla unveils full self-driving, the robo-taxi, and Google Maps gets better for EV drivers. Those stories and many more coming up on today's podcast. It's show 452. My name is Martin Lee. Welcome to EV News Daily. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the show. I've been through every EV story today to find out the ones that you really need to know about to save you time. But frankly, there is just one big story, and it's from yesterday's Tesla event. It's the thing that everybody's talking about, and it's a story that's gone way past the usual EV blogs and communities, every possible mainstream outlet talking about this. So let's dive into that. Hey, thank you to myev.com for helping make this show. Uh, they have uh, been sponsoring the show, ooh, blimey, almost a year. Not quite. And uh, it's a, a marketplace. It's USA only for now. And uh, they are all about buying and selling or helping you buy and sell, enabling you to do that, to put you in touch with the people that you need to be put in touch with uh, to buy and sell only EVs. No, just flicking through all the other are the cars that are on those normal websites, those normal marketplaces. This is specifically about EVs. So, the big story was Tesla's Autonomy Day yesterday. It's hard to know what angle of the story to bring you, which outlets to talk about. So many people are making comment about this. And like I say, it it goes into every possible mainstream outlet, newspaper, blog, website. Let's go, let's start though. Let's start and go full nerd. As the presentation started with way more information about gigahertz than teraflop and teraflops than I ever wanted to know about or will indeed know about ever again. Uh, Tesla has unveiled a new chip and a computer for its cars, custom designed by an internal team Uh, It's led by the Apple veteran Pete Bannon. Now, the hardware started full production last July. July 2018, full production started. It's already being retrofitted to employee vehicles, according to Elon at the Autonomy Day, intended to showcase autonomous driving progress yesterday. Tesla's dropped NVIDIA's products as a result, which they've been using up until now. That's the verdict, right? of computer business review so we are starting at the full tech end of the uh, of the kind of reviews if you like so computer business review so the tesla chip built for the company by samsung is capable of 76 trillion operations per second tops t-o-p-s trillion operations per second It'll get through 76 trillion of them, and it draws only 100 watts, actually less than 100 watts, and it includes what Pete Bannon described as the modest GPU, with the aim that being that the neural net improves performance. Uh, the amount of post-processing the GPU does is going to shrink. The computer has 12 A72 64-bit CPUs for general-purpose processing that operate at 2.2 gigahertz. All of that means they've done their own thing in terms of silicon and chip hardware. And Pete Bannon came over from Apple to do this project three years ago, and they finally unveiled it. Pete Bannon said this, and I quote, In 2016, there was no ground-up neural network accelerator. Everyone was adding instructions to their CPU or GPU or DSP, whatever a DSP is, uh, to make it better. For inference, I was hired in Feb 2016. I asked Elon if he was willing to spend all the money it takes to do full custom system design. He said, are we going to win? And I said, of course. So we got a bunch of people and we got to work. I'll put a link to Computer Business Review in the show notes. Fred at Electric, one of the EV outlets that we often look at for stories, uh, points out the hardware is already actually on the road in EVs. The company clarified it was already in all new Model S and Model X's uh, since March, actually, and all new Model 3 vehicles earlier this month. That was much later than the S and the X, around April 12th. The new hardware started going in. Elon Musk said that Tesla will start offering retrofits to any uh, current Tesla owner who bought the full self-driving package. That's going to start in the next few months. Employee retrofits continue as they uh, assess and test the hardware and software. Well, Tesla owners who wish to use their vehicles for the Tesla network are going to be able to manage their cars through their smartphone. What's the Tesla network? Let me explain. Elon Musk dropped several points of information 
that are going to be key to the Tesla Network's robo-taxi service as well, says Simon at Teslarati. Among those is the vehicle's longevity. Elon Musk noted the current generation battery packs are good for three to 500,000 miles. Though Tesla's upcoming batteries, they're going to be going into production next year, will operate for twice as long, up to 1 million miles with minimal maintenance. Operating the Tesla network will make Tesla a player in the highly competitive ride-sharing market, which is dominated by giants like Uber and Lyft, thanks to their low operating costs as all-electric cars. Tesla's EVs hold an advantage, you see. Tesla estimates that running a robo-taxi will cost around 18 cents or even less per mile to run. That undercuts maybe the others by like 2 to $3 dollars per mile of ride-sharing. So the plan is you buy a Tesla, you put it into the Tesla network, and off it drives when you're asleep, and it earns you money. And it earns you quite good money, up to $30,000 a year, according to the statement yesterday. In a separate article on Electric, Fred Lambert said on the app, Tesla owners can add their cars to a shared fleet to earn them money or summon an autonomous Tesla vehicle to pick them up and bring them to a destination. Elon Musk dived deep into the economics of the fleet, both from Tesla's perspective and from the perspective of a Tesla owner. As Electrek previously reported, all new Tesla vehicles come with what Elon Musk believes is all the hardware necessary to achieve full self-driving through future updates delivered over the air software updates. He estimates that Tesla will have over a million of the vehicles on the road by the end of the year, around the time they start activating full self-driving capability. But what is full self-driving is some of the questions that I've seen today. There is a generally accepted level zero to level five autonomous driving kind of ladder that you climb up. Level four would be the car doing everything that it needs to do with you in the driver's seat. Level five would be there's no driver in the car. And that's, I think that's what they're talking about. Level five, full self-driving. Of course, the phrase full self-driving is in itself a Tesla marketing phrase. It's something that they've used to describe their series of driver assistance tools. And so it's very hard sometimes to pin down <laughs> the definition of what they mean by full self-driving. One of the um, electric forum members uh, who goes by the name of Mr. Extra Conservative, said this. People call Elon Musk crazy when he said his rockets would fall from space and land safely backwards. Impossible! Today is more of the same, says this comment. And that's uh, it's a comment echoed by many people online saying this is incredible, which in a glimpse into the future. And equally people saying, this is mad. It can't be done. It's just so much the stuff of science fiction. And I must admit, my mind is slightly blown at the thought of me not being in my car, but my car, if I owned a Tesla, wheeling itself off to do jobs and earning me money. The The other thing that I I may have missed in all of this, and so you know, I've tried to soak all this up for the last few hours and try and distill it, and I only really talk about what we need to talk about on this podcast. I think I'd understand. If a car can make... Up to $30,000 a year for you, your car, as part of the, 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 the network, the robo-taxi. Why would Tesla sell cars? Why wouldn't they just make cars and use them themselves? Maybe they need to. I'll try and, I'll try and argue it out with you <laughs> in my brain. Maybe they need to be a car maker first in order to get to that stage to fund all of the money it takes to become that company and then one day they'll stop selling cars or they'll make cars but they'll use them themselves there's more money in the long term the long tail of being the new uber the new lyft i don't know i can't work it out why would you sell somebody a car because that person can then go make a ton of money with it well just keep the car yourself and then every car you make it's making you a ton of money Really funny article today that I will finish off with on this story, and it's by uh, Gizmodo. Gizmodo have ranked how outrageous some of the statements were based on an Elon score. So they give uh, one Elon out of five if it's pretty realistic, all the way up 
uh, awarding the full five Elons. Uh, the first phrase they picked up on was this, and I quote, The new Tesla microchip is the best chip in the world objectively. End quote. Well, Gizmodo say that according to Bloomberg, even NVIDIA, which Musk says... Uh, Tesla had transitioned away from already as a chip supplier to begin installing their own in-house chips. Even NVIDIA admitted that Tesla had raised the bar for self-driving computers, and therefore, it's a realistic statement, one out of five Elons. Must try harder. They move on to say this, and I quote, well, this is what Elon said, and I quote, Tesla will have level five autonomy in 2020, which means they will self-drive so well, no one needs to pay attention, end quote. Well, Gizmodo rate that one higher. They say that claiming that Tesla cars have the hardware for full autonomy and only need the software to be upgraded is like saying that we have seeds. Now we just need to plough, plant, nurture, harvest and eat. Carnegie Mellon University Robotics Institute engineer is Raj Rajmakumar. And he said this to The Verge. Basically, uh, they're at the starting point. Full autonomy is many years away. So for that, they give him three out of five Elons. But the top score they give him is for this quote. Probably two years from now, we'll make a car with no steering wheels or pedals. And for that, you get the full five Elons. I thought it was because that seems that that just blows my mind. Right. Uh, In two years, we'll be making a car with no steering wheel or pedals. Please don't do that. Your cars are fun to drive. I definitely want to buy one with a steering wheel and pedals. It's slightly mind-boggling. Uh, if you watch the presentation, it's hours long. Well, the video's hours long. I'm still I'm just getting through it and, uh, and and wading through it. But I've watched the bits that I needed to watch, all of Pete Bannon's stuff and all of Elon's stuff. I think there's more uh, that I haven't got to yet. I certainly spent a long time yesterday, a uh, large part of my day, watching a video loop for <laughs> about half an hour uh, as the presentation was running late. Uh, there's some fun stuff in there as well. Like I, People were picking up on shots and b-roll footage of teslas that they hadn't seen before and the new roadster and things like that so opening the door with a swipe of your finger uh, which is all very interesting Uh, anyway let's move on let's move on we've done a lot on autonomy uh, today a couple more stories to go firstly this is a great bit of news for ev drivers from google maps from now on all you got to do is open google maps if you want to hunt for an open ev charging station says engadget uk today the latest version of google maps for android and ios and the web now shows real-time availability for charging, uh, rapid chargers and charging ports in the US and in the UK as well, giving you a much better idea of when to go for a top-up of your electrons. You're no longer relegated to static info like before. And so Google Maps have recently added was it before Christmas, I think? Uh, it wasn't that long ago they added all of the uh, many of the charging stations here in the UK. Now they're pulling in live data as well the feature won't help you find a tesla supercharger but you've got the tesla app for that and if you're driving a tesla the dashboard tells you Uh, but it will cover the networks uh, that are bp charge master evgo sema connect and charge point is just on the cusp of coming and you can download the latest google maps to get that and have a play with it i haven't yet and i'm looking forward to seeing that live data show up i mean all of these Operators have apps of their own, but it's good to have it in Google Maps as well. It helps if you're just in one app. Finally, talking EVgo, EVgo and Maven Gig are introducing uh, first in the nation public ride-sharing EV charging hubs. Let me explain more about this. At a special ribbon-cutting event over the weekend, uh, the Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti joined the LA-based company, which is called EVgo. They are the nation's largest public fast charging network. And Maven, well, Maven is General Motors' car sharing platform. Uh, We're talking car sharing here. Uh, To celebrate the introduction uh, introduction of a new network of EV fast charging hubs that will feature both public and dedicated fast chargers for Maven Gig's shared use vehicles. Well, Los Angeles is the home to EVgo's first local network of public ride-sharing, fast EV charging hubs. They're going to include three locations across the city, demonstrating LA's role as a leader, they say, in transportation electrification. Kathy Zoe is the CEO of EVgo. Uh, Kathy Zoe said this, and I quote, Our new network of public ride-share fast charging hubs in LA is the first of its kind and will make charging quick and easy for Maven Gig members while helping to improve access for all EV drivers across the city. End quote. 
not enough EVs are being used for ride sharing. Anyone I know about here in the UK in terms of ride sharing or car sharing, not ride sharing, wrong phrase. Oh, this, my brain is frazzled. Uh, for car sharing and uh, the shared use vehicles in the UK, they're called Zipcar. And on Zipcar, I'm a member of that. I've never actually tried uh, only hiring an EV, but there's a filter on that. And if you want a car for an hour or two hours or a day, you can click electric and it'll only show you the cars in the network in London, at least, for that are electric only. I must try that be fun thing to try well thank you very much to everyone who is chipping in with question of the week already and there's uh, you got till sunday to get yours in i'll read yours out on sunday thanks to myev.com for setting our question of the week and it's this what's the dumbest thing you've ever heard about evs you can email me hello at evnewsdaily.com I want to say a heartfelt thank you to all the patrons of this show. I've got some new names to mention tomorrow on the program, so I will. Thank you very much for all of those who fund this podcast. There are 451 previous shows online, and you can get those first and free and automatically. The new ones, that is, if you hit subscribe in your podcast app, maybe on Apple, iTunes, or Google, or Spotify. In the meantime, have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow, and remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.